uh, is there a time you've proposed March 5, Geneva? Has that been accepted? We've had no answers yet. Uh, the, you know, what's going through the ambassadors and through that process, and it was only a short time ago that we came together and said, well, that would be suitable for us, and now it's up to them to let us know whether they want to do that or not. Do they look like they'll accept it? We don't know. Just what, haven't heard uh, back. What's your guess on the prospects of uh, success? Well, I don't think anyone, looking back over history, should be euphoric, but I just have to cling to some optimism when you look at the situation and realize that this is literally the first time that they have ever publicly uh, stated a desire to reduce uh, the number of weapons. And uh, always before it seemed that we sat down and, and the negotiations were, well, how fast are we going to increase them? And now here we are coming at this with both sides having said that their ultimate goal would be they'd like to, that we'd all like to uh, eliminate nuclear weapons entirely. Uh, you told Hugh Sidey that you would like to see them push ahead on their own SDI? Yes. Why? Well, <laughs> because I think it could, it could hasten the day when we would eliminate nuclear weapons. What if, if our research uh, revealed that we can have a defensive weapon that can, uh, whether it is completely 100% effective or not, can reduce the real threat of anyone pushing the button because of, uh, they know that very few of their weapons would get through. Then it just makes a lot of sense to, uh, to say let's eliminate that, that weapon. Now if both sides have it, uh, this answers the argument of those who say, well, won't the other side just multiply the number of weapons uh, hoping to increase the number that could get through a defense? As a matter of fact, this is why we said all we want to do right now, all we're asking is research. And the time comes that that research leads to the development of a weapon, we're willing to meet and discuss deployment. Are you willing to abide by or keep in force all the past uh, arms agreements with the Soviets while the negotiations are going on? Well, we have been more or less doing that. Uh, I think we've been doing more of it than they have in, in SALT II. Uh, but uh, I, I just think as long as they know that in the absence of an agreement, we are not going to sit back unilaterally disarming and let them carry on their great military buildup to an unquestioned superiority. Uh, then there would be no point in negotiating because they'd have no reason to negotiate. They, I think the reason we're coming to the table is that they know, as we know, that the choice now is have some legitimate agreement on the reduction of arms or face an arms race. Well, then uh, you would be willing to abide by keeping the agreements in force? Yes, we've made no uh, effort to, to change that. On the summit, you, you don't want to get acquainted. Why not? You, when you went to China, you, you noticed free enterprise. In fact, you called that shot very well. And uh, why not get acquainted with them, size them up? You've never been to the Soviet Union. Well, we uh, China was a little... A little different thing. Uh, a little friendlier. Uh, yes, they had been here, and uh, the uh, we also had an agenda of legitimate things we were going to discuss with them. And all I've said about the Soviet Union is, and they have said the same thing. See, we're not alone in that. They've said there must be an agenda. There must be some things that we're going to meet uh, that require a summit to discuss and talk out. Aren't there to, a lot of things that you could talk well, about? Well, that there are things that, that uh, at a ministerial level, talks that are going forward, having to do with fishing agreements and trade agreements and things of that kind. The, the other point is, Alan, look, and uh, I shared this information with the others too. In the 48 years, from the beginning of Roosevelt's first term to mine, there have been eight presidents, 
And those eight presidents over a period of 48 years only had to deal with three different Russian leaders. Well, I had three in the first three years. And uh, I can see very well where they themselves were in no position to. Uh, for three years, they were getting used to, if you know, to say a new leader most of the time. So I, I started out trying. still shaking down then. Well, and now we have again, apparently, a health problem. But, um, and I can understand that when a newcomer comes in, particularly in their type of government, and now has to set himself in there. When it was Brezhnev, who had been there longer, and whom I had met 10 years before, my first year, as a matter of fact, from the hospital, I, I sent him a handwritten letter uh, discussing things that, uh, having to do with peace and so forth, that I thought uh, that we had discussed 10 years before when I was a governor. And he was you, a, um, uh, General Haig said this place uh, uh, run by the Troika was a zoo. Uh, do you have uh, any new cabinet officers in mind, and are you going to give Regan a full hand and uh, free hand in filling all these vacancies? Well, free hand to the extent that I have the ultimate responsibility, so I don't think he'll be going off hiring people without he and I getting together on it and agreeing on, on someone. But uh, Any new cabinet? Well, there, you know some of the changes that are being made. Uh, right now, I don't know of any other uh, post where they're talking about leaving. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because I think a, a, when you go outside of government as completely as we did and bring people from the private sector in, which was what I wanted to do and what I'd done as governor, uh, you recognize that there's going to come a time for most of them when they're going to have to say, well, that's all the time I can give. Do you I'm have a White House job for Kirkpatrick? I am hopeful that, uh, that we have something that she would uh, enjoy doing. And In the White House? Uh, well, it's not physically in the White House, but it is a, a department of the executive branch uh, that uh, I'm not free to talk about yet, but that uh, I think that she would be very good at. Foreign policy? Uh, well, <laughs> but, think it's a bread <laughs> Let me say it would be consistent with her field and her her experience. Right. Uh, well, what, what about the zoo business? Do you think that's an unfair attack on your? On the what? Zoo, calling it a zoo. Hey. Oh. Or is well, it just sour graping? I'm, I won't comment on that, but uh, there's been no troika or anything else here. And Helen, in spite of all the stories to the contrary, uh, the buck really does stop right over there, that desk. And a lot of other things, too. Huh? Yeah. Four more years. Um, what is this love feast with uh, O'Neill? Uh, how long will the honeymoon last this time? <laughs> well, I you don't know. But, uh, I don't know, but we had a meeting uh, yesterday of the uh, leadership of both uh, houses and both parties' uh, leadership. Right. And it, uh, it was, uh, uh, well, there was a, a fine spirit of, in there and uh, expressions of cooperation. And uh, so... Uh, I'm going to take them at their word that... Why uh, do they have this new lease on life? Or well, I think when you come down to it, Helen, the, the, actually, the, the disagreements are not what they were years ago, of one side wanting to go the opposite way. Uh, if, if you look at the debate, the debate basically is uh, not uh, whether we shall have from one side the great spending on some new programs, and uh, the other side saying, no, let's not. The debate is about, uh, well, how much shall we reduce spending? Uh, everyone is united that we must reduce the deficit. And uh, there may be disagreements as the actual techniques or technicalities of getting at that problem. Well, that makes for a lot different debate than we had in the past when right. one side was opposing the institution of a brand new social program. Are you prepared now to endorse the uh, tax uh, simplification that the Treasury Department drew up? Well, we can't say that item for item in it because, because of the budget problems that we've been dealing with and for some long, bloody hours, 
Um, mm -hmm. We have not dealt with the, uh, the Treasury uh, program or study in the same way. We're waiting until we get the budget out of the way. Right. Then we'll sit down in the same manner around the same big table in there and start going at all the options that are presented in that program. But you go for the, the concept. The over, yes, the overall concept of tax simplification and uh, actually the reduction of rates. Uh, well, uh, you, uh, the Wall Street Journal had you worrying about country club dues not being deducted, or is that unfair? Uh, there are some, uh, uh, there are some areas where heretofore uh, that has been recognized as a legitimate uh, a deduction because of the need, for example, in some uh, non-advertising industries to make personal contacts. But uh, what we're going to do about things like that with this new simplification, uh, uh, that'll remain to be seen. We haven't debated any of it yet. Uh, when Fad and uh, Mubarak come, uh, almost following each other on heels, do you have a new Middle East uh, plan? Uh, or do you think there's any possibility of a breakthrough? Or? Well, no, we're still, we still believe in the same plan that we proposed. And they're the... Uh, close proximity of their visits isn't, um, uh, is, is not nothing deliberate, to do. has nothing to do with it. No, it just, that's the way it worked out. But what we're still trying to do is bring about uh, the getting together of the moderate Arab states and Israel. In other words, to produce more Egypt's uh, treaties of that kind to have peace once and for all between those countries. Is it more hopeful? Um, well, I've never given up hope. It was, uh, it was certainly delayed by the whole Lebanon experience. We had been making progress uh, before uh, uh, King Hussein and uh, uh, Arafat were meeting on uh, how negotiations could be brought about uh, with Israel. Then that was broken off, but they have been in communication again. Jordan has now recognized Egypt. You remember Egypt lost mm -hmm. its recognition from the Arab League because of its treaty with Israel. So uh, I have to believe that there are uh, those on both sides who do uh, want to find a settlement. And why uh, did you break off talks with Nicaragua? I mean, the dual actions of the World Court and breaking off talks seem to indicate that you have some, you're going to put more military pressure on No, them. No, we didn't break off the talks. They have just, the talks came to an end and have not been, a date has not been set for any renewed talks uh, with them. But uh, it wasn't a, a breaking off, and uh, this is very much still on the agenda for us. Uh, we, we would like a political settlement uh, if that were possible down there. We recognize the issue is in, in Nicaragua that the people of Nicaragua who wholeheartedly supported the revolution, supported a revolution whose announced aims were the implementation of full democracy, and instead one faction of the revolution took over and instituted a totalitarian regime. Well, at the same time, this totalitarian regime is exporting subversion, uh, is attempting to get and the they over still are? Yes, they're still trying to get the overthrow of the Salvadoran government uh, by way of support of the... And they aren't the more rebels. conciliatory now? No. Have and you stopped uh, the arms from the Soviets to uh, Nicaragua? Uh, no, they, they have not been completely headed off at all. And uh, so we feel that uh, Let's see, even in our own interest, to be supportive of the people of Nicaragua. Mr. President, you, uh, you want uh, abortion to be made a crime. And uh, what would be the proper punishment? I mean, would that be capital punishment if it was murder? Well, I haven't thought about it from that standpoint. I, I mean, have somebody only... would have to pay the piper, wouldn't well, they? Well, all I've said is, and, and then we'll see what the legalities are from there. I have said that today the evidence in my view, is so incontrovertible that the unborn child 
is a living human being. Now, there's only one way in our society in which we condone the taking of human life, and that is in defense of our own. It's part of our Judeo-Christian tradition. But this is, I think, more of a civil rights problem right now than it is a, a certainly not a religious problem. It is a, a case of if this is a living entity, then how do we approve people just uh, on whim or because they don't want to be inconvenienced taking that human life? Well, sometimes it's deeper than that. But anyway, there would be punishment, wouldn't there? Yes, I'm sure there would. Could be jail for Ohio? Well, I'm, I'm not going to get into those technicalities. I only, I, I would like to call your attention that even in medical circles now, instead of simply referring to the fetus as it, uh, there are more and more doctors that are using the term the second patient. That in other words, as the mother is a patient or the prospective mother, that infant the mother is carrying is also a patient and a doctor's responsibility. So yeah. this recognition, the only way it seems to me that the pro-abortionists could make their case and justify it is if they could prove that this was not a living entity. And until they can, and I don't believe they can, but until and unless they could do that, then we're talking about an individual that has a right to the constitutional protection of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Do you feel freer now that you don't have to face another election? I mean, do you think that you can do more? Or uh, have, have you had some sense of a burden being lifted? Well, there's, a, oh, there's always a little feeling of that. Uh, uh, for one thing, that uh, the knowledge that no one will be looking at everything you do and saying is political. But in the first four years, Helen, just the same as when I was governor of California. I insisted in our cabinet process that we do not discuss the political ramifications of any issue before us, that it must be decided on the basis of what is right or wrong, good or bad, for the people. And uh, I think the one burden that is lifted is what I mentioned earlier, that no matter how much I refused to consider politics in making a decision. I was always accused <laughs> of, of uh, having politics And you think you still it. will? Well, no, I don't think I will now, but uh, they can't say the same thing. Do you have a candidate for 88, like George Bush? <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk candidates for 88. But do you, you uh, I know, he's cutting me off. No, I've just been no. on the boat. Oh, what is it? Ah, uh, you have a noose. Shall we give you a news scoop? Yes. The Senate committee holding hearings on James Confirmed Baker. Confirmed him. <laughs> just voted unanimously to recommend his confirmation. That's wonderful. Well. Boy, that's quick stuff. How about the merger between the trade uh, and office and commerce? Well, no decision has been made on that Are you that supporting? Yet. I mean, are you favoring it? Well, uh, are you favoring Baldridge or Schultz, I should say? I'm the one that has to make the decision. And, and you I, haven't made a and decision. And so I, I don't want to comment because I haven't made the decision yet. Um, do you um, uh, have anything to regret besides that tax bill from the first term? I mean, that's the one you seem to have, you, the $99 billion. Is there anything you would have done differently? Well, yes, if I'd known what I know now. I was... I definitely believe that increasing taxes endangers the recovery that we're having. That the great problem we face economically is the percentage of gross national product that the government is taking from the private sector. Now it was true that most of the things in that bill were uh, in the nature of closing loopholes, and some of them were loopholes that we had never asked for in the beginning ourselves, but that were added on to our original tax cut bill. And they were, you'd have to consider them unfair. They were, they were kind of special for some groups and denied to others. So from that standpoint, I could, I could reconcile myself to that. But the proposal was that there was going to be $3 in additional cuts in spending for every dollar of increased tax. And that 
I thought I could live with that one dollar in return for those three because we never did get uh, all of the spending cuts that we thought were possible and that we'd asked for. Then, as it turned out, we didn't get the spending cuts. And frankly, I felt cheated. Mm -hmm. But uh, any other things you could have regretted uh, doing in the first term that you can make up for or, or are passe <laughs> now? Or? Um, no, I think we fought as hard as we could for the things like the cuts that we believe in, and we got enough of the percentage of our, of our um, proposal that we've had this recovery, and now for three years straight, inflation yes. has averaged 3.9% down from double digits. We know where the interest rates are, and I think they're going to come down further, and we know what happened to unemployment, and we have to say this is the first time in this history of recessions uh, since World War II that we have brought unemployment and inflation both down at the same time. It is phenomenal, the whole thing. You think anything can go wrong? No, as a matter can of fact, uh, the latest uh, economic indicators and the ones just released the other day uh, are better than uh, we ourselves had estimated. You told USA that uh, you've never changed your views in the White House. Does that mean the presidency doesn't teach you anything? Oh, well, I was talking about my basic philosophy of believing, <laughs> as I say, in that government has got to spend less. Government has been too intrusive in, in the private sector and in, in the lives of the people. I still believe that, and we still have a ways to go, although we've corrected many things. Some of the little things that, that aren't really little, but that escape notice. For example, Helen, we, we consolidated based on our experience in state government, when we were on the receiving end of categorical grants from the federal government, we consolidated some 52 categorical grants into, I think it was eight or 10, uh, 10 I think, uh, block grants. And in doing that, reduced the amount of administrative personnel in the Washington by 3,000 employees in simplifying that. But reduced 30,000 pages of regulations imposed on local governments to 885 pages. And all of those are the things that I mean that I still believe in. And so your goals are the same for uh, yep. the second term? Yeah. What are they really? To cut down the size of government and... Uh, and uh, economic, continued economic expansion with uh, low or no inflation. And uh, on the international scene, to pursue the goal of getting rid of nuclear weapons entirely and uh, bringing about the possibility of peace in the world. Do you, did your grandchildren, your grandchildren have any observations about the White House? Oh, I didn't, well, one of them doesn't talk enough. One of them just could barely get out grep pa <laughs> for me. Uh, that's Ashley uh, Cameron. Uh, you know, he seemed to be having a good time, and he and I built that snowman that's in the Rose Garden. You had a house but, full. Yes. Was that enjoyable? Yes, it was. We had 14, all told. What was the highlight of the inauguration? Oh, for my. You? Um, I mean, what did you... I don't know, but... I, well, there were two things that both involved young people that, uh, that really turned me on. One was the pre-inaugural pageant with all those wonderful young people and seeing them with their obvious patriotism all. And the same thing, pretty much the same thing, when we went out to the Capitol Center to and meet so with those who weren't going to be allowed to couldn't parade. And I do think it, I think it eliminated a lot of the disappointment uh, in that get together, but to see them again and their enthusiasm and all. Uh, those right. were folks very moving. Right. Oh, Thank you, all Mr. Right. Deeper, all right. Uh, well, he's, they're making a lot of tests and things, isn't it? He may be a White House victim.